So, all right, guys. So, we were talking about snakes that are not eating in particular ball pythons. They're, they're like you, notorious for that, right? So, you have them for a while. And they always stop eating at some phase, whether it's 500 grams, it's 1,000 grams, it's 1,500. Whatever that benchmark is for that snake, you just say, hey, I don't want to eat. But you still need them to eat so that you can go on with the program so that you can monitor them and make sure that they're healthy. So the snake that we're going to talk about is a clown. It's a possible one stream male. And you can see I got him in this 40 quart container. You can see how it's set up here. This is a breeding setup. So I have a water dish here. I got a high here. And so now I'll get the snake. And you can see he's here. And the last time we weighed him on the 30th of March, he was 642 grams. So I'm guessing he still might be around a 600 gram mark. He has an eight cents uh, we weighed him so it's a little bit of a concern for me since he missed one meal but just to make sure um, what I'm going to do is and I'll bring this over here is I got this small animal pet carrier and it's filled up with warm water so what I'll do with them is I'll put them in there so that I can make sure that he's not dehydrated and it's lukewarm water and I'll put the top on and what I'll do here is I will soak him for about 20 minutes. So in that time, what, I, what it will do is it'll let him drink water, let him hydrate. Um, I'll watch him to make sure that he's not drowning or anything, but I want to make sure that there's enough water in there to where he can actually drink if he's dehydrated. And that might be one of the reasons why your snake has went off feed, that it's dehydrated. And even though we have these water dishes in there, they don't always go into the water dish and drink water, but if they're fully submersed, they can get water in through their tail end or they can drink the water. So, hey guys, now we're gonna move on to the next step as to how we're going to try to make this a less of a large enclosure and make it more smaller so that maybe that'll get them to feel more secure. So guys, this is what I think the problem is. So we have a 600 gram snake, uh, really 642, and we moved him up too quickly to this 40 quart container because he was getting closer to the breeder size, so I wanted to house him in something that would be a little bit larger, get more space. Well, I did that prematurely, so what I feel the solution would be is to, of course, try to hydrate the snake, but then move him back down to a 15 quart. And this is a 15 quart hefty container that we got from Lowe's. It's about $8.30. Uh, the price of this 40 quart container, which this came from Home Depot, was about $13 and it comes with, you know, the locking lids and it's got pre-drilled holes on the side. But one of the things that we are going to do is just for the point of illustration as to what you can do, is you can keep your existing uh, enclosure and you can put more hides and more stuff in it. That too might help your ball python feel more secure, but we don't have that since we are raising them up to breed. We try to keep things as sterile as we can and that way we can control the humidity, the heat, and all those other parameters. But what we'll be doing is putting this hide back in here with the water dish. And it, and it will look a little crowded, but what we found is that the tighter the space, as long as they can still move because snakes will make a way, um, they'll start back feeding. So we're gonna do that um, and we'll leave him in there for about you know four days to see if he's um, readjusted. And then we'll try to feed him again. So, hey guys, while he's still soaking right now, but while he's doing that, I'm going to go ahead and drill half of this with holes, and I'll just show you guys how we do that as well. All right? So now you see I have my cordless drill here. I got my 15-quart tub, and what I'll do is I'll just go ahead and start drilling holes in it from the side. To get rid of the excess, what I do is I go over with the old razor and I just shave it off with that. I do it on the outside and then I just do it on the inside.
I found that that's the that's the easiest way to do it uh, because that way I can I can be sure to get it all out of there. All right, guys. So now that now that I've drilled the holes in the 15 quart, I've washed it out. Um, I also went ahead and disinfected and washed out the bowl, and I washed the hive. And so what we're going to do next is we're just going to set it up like I know how I normally would. So normally what I would do is I would go ahead and put the water dish in inside of the container and then I'll get some rep to chip bark. I want to add fresh fresh bark bedding in there. And so I'll put that inside of there. That way it seems like an all new home. I spread it around the bowl that way uh, it'll be in there securely and then I'll put the hide back inside. And now that that's in there like that. You can see how that setup is. It's kind of tight, but what the snake will do is he can get inside of the hide and then he can also come out, climb on top, climb over the water dish. But it makes it feel more secure because now the snake can feel up against its body as it moves around and that makes the snake like a ball python feel a lot more secure and it'll kind of entice him to eat a little bit. So now the second thing we'll do is we'll go ahead and get him out of here. He's been soaking for 20 minutes. So he's nice and wet. And uh, so now we'll just put him in there. We'll leave him in there for about four or five days and then see what happens, guys. See if he likes his new home. See if he moves around. So we got him in there like that. And you can see that he's inside of it. And all I do now is I just put this on top. I clamp him in. And then he's ready to go back onto the shelf. Guys. All right, guys. So I'll see you in a little bit to see if this works for him in a couple of days. All right. Or four or five days. All right, guys. So now we're back. It's been about four or five days. And we are going to try to see if this uh, clown male that we have will feed from the new setup. You know, if us changing the size of the enclosure, moving from a 40 quart down to a 15 quart. And we're going to feed five wing rats. So we're gonna to try to do that and see how that goes and see if this snake will eat. Now remember what we did to change things up, well, we kept the temperature constant. We used a digital thermostat to regulate a under tank heater or a heat, a heat strip is what it actually is on. So it's around 88 to 90, 91 degrees. And we reduced the size down about two thirds, roughly, you know, going from 40 to 15, you know, so, uh, Hey guys, we're gonna just try to see if that works, all right? All right, so I've already removed the hide from the enclosure now. I just got the ball python sitting in there. And so what I'm going to do now is put the rat right on top. And I'll close the enclosure to try to make sure it's tighter. I left the water dish in to kind of make sure that it would stay closer, uh, reduce some of the space that's in there. But I'm really trying to see if the tighter space for the snake will prompt it to eat. We got to always consider, you know, so if we're feeding a live prey item, it could actually hurt your snake. But that's why I chose a weaned rat, a live weaned rat, because I know that the teeth aren't that big. And the main thing that we're trying to do, guys, is our pet is the ball python. So with that being number one, I treat it like I would treat any dog, cat, or if I, if I had a pet rat and it wasn't eating, I would do whatever it took to get it to eat. But I knew that this this small rat would agitate the snake enough in a smaller space to where eventually the snake would strike it. So I had the light on at first and just because for the point of the video, I had the light on. If I, if, I, if I wasn't filming the video, then I wouldn't have had the light on. But when I turned the light off, 
the rat got more active as well. It agitated the snake and the snake ultimately killed the uh, rat. So we'll video it to see if the snake, now the next part is will the snake actually swallow the rat? And if the snake swallows the rat, then this was a success. And that way we can try to see if this is going to be something that will lead to further progress in getting this male snake to get its weight going back or just not to lose weight. Um, but remember guys, this is something that we can do. You can dehydrate, I mean, your snake could be dehydrated, so you need to hydrate your snake. You can either add more hides, or you can put it in a smaller container, and then just make sure that it's a tight area. So you could remove the snake from this box and put it in a smaller container, like a bag or something like that. But I like this method because in this one, I can actually observe the snake and the rat. So if things get a little bit dicey to where the rat starts attacking the snake, then I can stop. I can step in and stop. So guys, as you can see, the uh, the change was a success, moving down from a 40 quart to a 15 quart, just making the tub size smaller, did the snake a lot of good and getting it to eat. I mean, I think that that's one of the things that we always forget. These animals live in areas that are very tight and cramped. So uh, now what I'll do is just put the hide back inside and I will Try to keep the camera on him while I grab the hide. Put the hide back inside. And that way I can let him just rest and digest his food on the rack. All right, as you can see that this was a success. And the ball python did eat when we moved him from a 40 quart down to a 15 quart. We put a little bit more things in there so that the animal, the, the rat would have to crawl around him and agitate him a little bit. So if you're having this problem, one of the things you can do, remember, is to hydrate your snake. Um, just soak them in some water that's about the size of their body, you know, up the water levels around their body. And then after about four or five days, now the snake's hydrated. You can put it in a small enclosure or you can use the hides or she can use the hides. And then when you introduce the prey item, then that prey will be forced to crawl around them, agitate them a little bit more, and that'll be more like a realistic thing that they would see in nature. So, hey, I hope this helps. If you did like this video, please like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time. All right.